Hey everyone, the Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. In today's video, we'll be going over VRRP on a Mikrotik router. I've had a few people comment to me and message me directly about it. I know there's already a video on the channel how to do this on Cisco, and the concept is still basically the same, but I wanted to give people that type of feel or that type of thing that they want. So we're gonna do this on Mikrotik as well. Um, and again, guys, if you want to see something specifically, please feel free to comment about it. Um, I'm more than happy to see if we can integrate the video somehow. I might not just look at one single concept, but if it's something that I think is beneficial to people, I will definitely make a video about it. Um, again, also, I just want to remind people to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. It helps grow this channel. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Let's get into the video. All right, so we've got two Mikrotik routers in this topology with a switch and a computer. Then we're gonna get internet access as well from our EVE server. Now I've already configured the internet access and everything. Um, if I log into these routers, I've already got internet. So what I don't have yet is I don't have LAN connectivity. I have set up a IP address on this computer. It's just a Docker with 10.0.0.50 being the IP and we're going to make 10.0.0.1 the default gateway. Now, if we make one IP address the default gateway, but there's two routers, how is this going to work? Because will the IP address exist on both routers at the same time? No, it, it won't. That is what VRRP is for. It's the virtual router redundancy protocol. So essentially what it does is you'll, you'll hear people talk about a floating IP. So this floating IP is basically live on one router at any given time. How is this determined? Well, the routers talk to each other on the same broadcast domain and they give each other details like, okay, cool, I am dealing with VRRP. Are you dealing with VRRP? Yes, you are. All right, let's quickly check what's my priority, what's your priority. The VRRP with the higher priority is the one that will get picked and the one with the lower priority is the one that will go into like a slave or a, a backup mode. You don't also need to just do it with two routers. If you have a third one or a fourth, you can add that as well. You could also potentially do this on your WAN, given that your service provider is willing to give you multiple ports on their equipment um, to configure. But that's a completely different story for itself. One other thing to note is people tend to mistake VRRP for clustering where you think, all right, I've got two routers. I put them in a VRRP domain. I'm going to now do uh, configuration, whatever I do on router one. <clears throat> they just kind of think it gets to router two automatically. It doesn't. Both these routers are live at the same time. It's just one of them will have a live floating IP. So whatever, if you want to do proper failover, then you're most likely going to have to make sure whatever configurations you do on one router, just try and replicate that onto the other router. I also saw somebody asking about DHCP. Well, if you enable DHCP, essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have two DHCP servers. So it might be wise in that situation to move your DHCP server to some something on site, like an actual server. Uh, but you can run it on both of the routers can definitely do that. It's just one of the server, you, you might have leases on a different router, then it, it will happen. It's kind of like what people do when they do man in the middle stuff. Um, yeah, so that, that's the explanation. I'm talking way too much. I just want to get into the configuration now to show you how to configure VRRP. I'm going to do one router on the command line and the other router I'll do on Winbox. So let's quickly jump into the win box first because I'm going to need to see what we're doing there. So I'm just going to jump into 192.168. So 101 is one of the routers. I believe R2 is 101. And there we are in old good old win box. So we've got four Ethernet ports. I've got IP addresses and this works with VLANs as well. You can set up VRRP with the VLANs as well. It's not an issue. Okay, there's a dynamic address I received. Let's just quickly check here. 
but I did give it a static IP and I did set up static routes. Okay, so that's fine. It's just the DHCP took a little bit of time to kick in, but it's not an issue. Don't even worry about it. If you work with Eve, you'll see this happens as well, but it's totally normal. All right, so let's get into the actual VRRP configuration. So to do this, we're gonna to go to our interfaces. We're going to go to VRRP. We're going to create a new VRRP interface. We can call this um, VRRP, it should be fine. And here where we say VRRP interface, this is quite important. So you saw I clicked on this tab. The interface is which interface is going to determine the priorities and such so in my case we're going to do it on the LAN which is Ethernet 2 the VRID is also important this is like a group ID almost if you will make sure it's the same on both ends the priority as I said this was quite important as well the lower priority is is the the backup so let's just make we can leave this priority on 100 we can leave preemption on as well the interval is just how many seconds it pulls to see if, if it's down or up or not. Because if it picks up that the the master is down, it will automatically set itself to the master and then its floating IP will become live. But you'll see that in a secchi. So that is fine. I'm going to apply that. And then I need to set an IP address as well. If I don't set an IP address, it's not going to work. So in this case, it's going to be 10.0.0.1 slash 24 on Ether2. Or that, that's actually, let's remove the slash 24. 001 is going to be our VRRP IP. And I'm going to add another IP address, 10.0.0.3 slash 24. Think of this as a secondary IP address that you can just access the router to manage it on. If something does happen, it shouldn't. But people tend to just give an actual IP to the interface and then your VRRP IP has its own single IP address. But you'll see what happens when I add the slash 24. There we go. Our VRRP is up. It's actually working. And if I jump back onto Eve and I go to my server, I just quickly want to see can I actually ping out now. I should be able to. So let's do a terminal. And let's see, can I ping the intranet? Yes. All right, cool. So we've got intranet access and the VRRP is actually running. It's working. Uh, 10001 is the default gateway on this computer. So I'll just quickly show you as well. IF config. So there's my ETH 0, 100050. And if I look at my routes, my default gateway is 10.0.0.1. All right, so let me quickly set up the VRRP on command line. Is this the right router? Yes, this is router one. So we're gonna go interface, VRRP, add our interface will be ether2 again. Our VRID was 50 and our priority. These are the very important bits. Really, if you think about it, you just need a ID and a priority and which interface. <laughs> That's it. So people tend to com like make it complicated when they think about VRRP, but it's really not. So let's set this one's priority to 200. Going to enter. Uh, we could probably just set a name as well. So interface VRRP print interface VRRP set name. Let's make this VRRP as well. Even though I'm not really changing anything, I just want to show you how to set the name. And there we go. So IP address, add address 10.0.0.1. And that we will assign to VRRP. And then IP address, add address 10.0.0.2 slash 24. And that we will assign to our Ether2. Cool. If I look now and I do a print, it should be up. Ping 10.0.0.1. Alright, so how do I verify if it's up or down, or which one's the master or the slave? It, I should be able to see if I do a interface print. 
so there's the vrp okay it is up and if i go to the other router and if i go to winbox all right so that's also up okay that's fine yeah that's fine the thing is if you go to your address you'll see this address is red now and that reason is because that floating IP address is not live on router 2 anymore. It's now live on router 1. So we've now made router 1 the primary router. So let's quickly do a test. I'm quickly going to run a continuous ping from the server, which I've got here. So let's run a ping to Google's DNS. And let's actually play out a failover scenario. So let's play out router one breaks it goes off it stops it's not working anymore there router one died and there we go we still have internet access we dropped a couple of packets maybe one or two and that was where router two was still saying hey um master are you still there and then the master said no i'm not i'm not here. <laughs> he didn't respond so then router two took over and as easy as i shut it off let's turn it back on and the moment this router comes back on you you might see another packet drop and then router one will route the traffic again so that's actually how simple it is configuring vrp on a mikrotik router i've showed you how to do it from the command line and winbox i hope it's given you some clarity as to how it works um one thing one thing before i end off the video please 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 don't do this don't do this i see people do this and you're going to cause yourself heartache they connect these two routers together and then they they set up the vrp on this link between the routers please don't why would you do that it doesn't make any sense um there there might be a use case that somebody will comment on and that's fine please comment i like it if people engage with me but i feel that's really impractical if you're going to try and establish if the link is off by having the two routers directly connected to each other. I mean, your VRP is working on layer two. You're going to do this on the switches on the switching layer. So if you start doing stuff like this, where you connect the cables together and then you bridge ether two and three together, and then you're trying to run the VRP like that, you're going to run into issues somewhere. I can promise you. So rather just do it the way it's intended, have your switch connected to your routers and then run the vrp like that it's it's just broadcast it's it's really nothing too serious all right so that is it i'm going to end off the video thanks for watching catch you in the next one